My name is Deborah Root, and I live in Southern Ontario in Canada. I grew up in Seattle and lived in several countries before finally settling in Toronto and now in the countryside. I'm a painter in oil with an interest in more or less realistic images that tell stories, usually about some weirdness in culture or personal relations. For many years, I wrote theory, visual culture, and politics, and did some art writing. I didn't make art. A lot of my friends worked in installation and video, so when I decided to make art, I first made a couple of videos. But I couldn't stand the screen. Oil painting is super analog, and it's slow, and I love it for that. Figuring out technique was ultimately a matter of seeing what worked and what didn't, and it's an ongoing process. I generally start with a concept, then draw it out, and then cut and paste the drawing to get the visual fragmentation I, I'm currently interested in. I really only know what will work when I see it. Then I draw it onto the panel and start painting. At the moment, I'm working mostly with tondos, and the round shape requires different compositional approaches than a rectangle. I work in layers with glazing and a lot of medium. So the skin tones usually have at least 10 layers or so, which is how I get the luminosity I'm looking for. I'm a real magpie when it comes to inspiration. I grew up looking at my mother's art books, but also Mad Magazine, which underlined the absurdities and hypocrisies of social mores. I like the idea of mixing pop culture with more traditional elements to expose underlying social and personal schisms, and I like the challenge of trying to figure out how to represent those ideas. I've also been influenced by Mesoamerican art, especially the Mishtet Chronicles, which are like storyboards that sometimes create fake heroic stories of leaders. And I like the way the early Eric Fischel showed the creepy underbelly of American suburbia. In terms of current work, I love Kerry James Marshall, especially the way his figures exist in space, and Salman Tour for the emotional intelligence of his bar scenes. Most important for me is that there be something at stake in the work. I want to know what the artist has to say. Surrender Dalawal, who's also a friend, has used installation, painting, and video to talk about the violent partition of India in 1947 and its aftermath. I like the idea of using art as a way to engage with difficult subjects. I think a work of art might give a viewer a new and unexpected way to understand the issue. For Clash 22, I'm showing a painting called Liberty Guiding the People, which is an image based on the G20 demonstration in Toronto in 2010. Over the three days of the protest, the police became increasingly violent towards protesters. At first there was a carnival feeling, then the police began to up their aggression, producing anxiety in the crowd that later turned into something more serious. My painting shows that moment when things began to turn and no one was sure what was going on. People are still riding their bikes and taking selfies, but there's a new feeling in the air. There's a line of police which created a militarized atmosphere. They soon began to move and kettle people into controlled spaces. The title refers to Delacroix's heroic and rather propagandistic painting of the 1830 revolution in France. But here we see the reality people confused and moving in different directions, unsure of what to do. So in this painting, and I guess I'd have to say for me in general, the moment of clash is less a single event than a series of smaller events that ultimately become a confrontation. I was so happy to apply to the Clash 22 show. I think I'd been starting to feel that art practice was being taken over by commercialism, where the work is supposed to be non-offensive, something to decorate your corporate office with. This seems especially true for painting, and it's claustrophobic. At one time, before funding cuts, there were a lot of artist-run centers in Toronto, and that's where the interesting work was. I love that the Lacuna Festival remains committed to a creative approach to art production, and that many different people are brought into the process. I love that the Lacuna Festival is artist-run and artist-centered at every level. It's such a good opportunity for us to connect with each other, and I'm super excited to see how other artists in the festival approach the theme of clash. There's a lot of clash going around, and who better than artists to engage with the issue? I really can't wait to see the work. I have a portfolio website, deborahroot.com. It also has some of my articles and links to my work. And I occasionally post images on Instagram at deborahroot.pec.
Thank you very much.